again. It's Heather from KDZ, and we're going to look at certainty. We are going to review some of the white supremacy culture patterns around this and the being an ally principles around humility and curiosity, and then look at what might be different if we were raised in a different culture. What might, how might we see certainty in a different way? Okay, so first of all, that white supremacy culture pattern as described by Tima Okun, fear. So perhaps there's a lot of fear around how much we want certainty about things because we're afraid of the uncertainty, perhaps because of our generational trauma that we've gone through, the dysregulation of our nervous systems and this desire to know what's going to happen, to have guarantees. And if we don't, it feels like our energy is dissipated. We don't feel grounded. There's a lot of fear in the unknown. Have a pause, look around. And I encourage you, if you're in the Facebook group, to jot down what comes up for you if, if there's uncertainty about something. Do you feel anxious? Why? What are some examples of that? There'll be links at the end in the description for how to <clears throat> join the Facebook group so that you can see the guide to certainty and share with other people who've watched the videos or attended a workshop. Okay, another pattern that seems really up in this is a sense of urgency. So we feel like we, things are so urgent that we don't have time to look at complexity. Things are so urgent, feel so urgent that we put our attention onto one thing and we, we want that to be certain. Means there's no time for inclusivity, no time to hear lots of different perspectives. So we might latch on to one perspective. For example, if we're um, driven by a collapse narrative, we might only wanna look at the one perspective that says collapse is inevitable. Or we want to look at uh, a narrative that says the opposite, that definitely humans are gonna figure this out and we're gonna be okay. like clinging on to this perspective because to let go of it is scary. And also, if there's uncertainty, it means that we might have to take more responsibility. And we have to make decisions about things because it's not certain which way it's going to go. Okay, pause on that one. It's really important that we do this in community so that we can develop our thinking through other perspectives. Don't wanna fall into the, the pattern, I'm the only one and I don't need to do this with anyone else. This isn't an isolated, piece of work. This is community work. Okay, denial and defiveness. If we are certain about something, then we're going to deny anyone else's perspective, reality. We are going to defend our position without any 
humility, and curiosity. So yes, as I alluded to, the I'm the only one, the individualism is like my perspective or the perspective of this other person who is saying that I'm the only one that knows the truth about collapse or what's going to happen is a pattern that feeds into certainty. It makes us feel calmer to think that someone's figured it out and we don't have to think for ourselves. Their perspective is all that we need. Because otherwise we need to slow down and listen to other people's perspectives. And we might not feel we have the capacity for that. Okay, another pattern is the one on there's only one right way to do things or the objectivity. You now, this is saying that certainty around this is what's going to happen. Um, we know it, it has to happen this way. objectively this is what's going to happen so there's no understanding of different factors that may come into play to to change that so the complexity of of how change happens if we ignore all of that and we're just certain that this thing's going to happen then that leaves out all the alternatives, all the possibilities, all the different ways that we can use human creativity and flexible intelligence to respond to all these crises. So we can't be certain about what's going to be, what's going to happen. We need to keep thinking. And there isn't someone who's particularly qualified to say something with certainty that just doesn't exist. And we get to be really uncomfortable with not knowing, not knowing what's going to work, not knowing what we need to do and being able to be open and curious and humble. Now, the last pattern I want to bring up is the either or binary pattern and this obviously pertains to certainty because if you say this one thing is going to happen then you're saying nothing else can happen it's this or nothing it's binary it's not actually part of this is going to happen and then there's other stuff that could happen or we don't know and and it's a you know there are good things about this and there are difficult, challenging things about this. And we don't know for certain what is going to happen. So it's all that complexity that we see um, that people are resistant to complexity in this particular culture that we find ourselves. Really important to take some time and think about how you see this playing out in your in yourself, in your home, in your relationships, in your work, in movements that you're in. What what kind of language is being used that implies certainty about things? Is it the certainty of a strategy or a tactic? Certainty about something around your health, what would make it, what makes it easier to have certainty about something? What would you have to do if it was uncertain? So 
So coming back to principles around being an ally, rather than feeling that we need certainty, we can be curious about the possibilities, have humility that it's impossible to be certain about something, that we can't possibly know what's certain, and that some person that we're looking to for answers, they can't possibly have all the answers. It's just one perspective. And we need all perspectives. And just like from the language liberation workshop, we need there to be a diversity of perspectives so that we can get more of a picture about what's going on so that we know how to respond appropriately. So what if we were raised differently? What if we weren't raised in a white supremacy culture um, and we, we had no certainty in our lives? What if we didn't use that kind of language? What if we didn't make those kinds of assumptions? What if we pondered things and stayed open to anything happening, to, to anything being true. Amitav Ghosh wrote an article, I wrote a, wrote a book, and there's an interview in DW News website um, called What the West Doesn't Get About the Climate Crisis says the new novel by award-winning Indian author Amitav Ghosh, Gun Island, uses climate change as a backdrop. He tells DW about the different perceptions of the climate crisis in the East and West. I come from a part of the world where we didn't have very rosy expectations of the world or the future, says Ghosh. We knew there would be a lot of upheavals and we witnessed these upheavals at first hand. So in that sense, I think Westerners, Westerners had a belief in stability and the promise of the future that I didn't share. So notice how this dovetails in with the workshop on hope and privilege and what kind of expectations people have for the future, what they're used to in the present and the past. And so if you were raised in a culture where there wasn't much stability and that people didn't expect the future to, to be progressively better, then you would have a different perspective on what's happening with climate change. He says in this article about how anxious kind of white Western people are about climate change and that, and, you know, and others that this anxiety disrupts our nervous system, makes it harder for us to think clearly about what the appropriate response is. And so then we act urgently and we stop being able to look at the big picture and to get all the perspectives that we need. And then we make mistakes. And then we're not getting the kind of outcomes that we want. And then this can cause us to feel anxious again. Uh, it's just a circle. So we need to be completely open to all these different perspectives on what we're facing. And if we're only getting native English speakers, and their perspectives, we're missing out. We're even missing out if we're getting non-native English speakers who are writing um, for English people in English. We need to figure out how to hear and understand what people who don't even speak English are saying about this. Get some good interpreters, get good translators, 
get these perspectives, which are rich and beautiful and allow us to think broadly and creatively about what's going on in the world. Okay, so pause on that and do some writing, reflecting, join a workshop. Out here in Colombia, the cost of living is really low. And so we really appreciate any amount of British pounds, US dollars that you can donate to help support this work. And there are so many other workshops and videos in this series. Hopefully you've been to all these previous ones. And um, you can make a donation through PayPal at heatherluna1. And I hope to see you soon.